Hey, thanks for joining us. I'm David Yak here. You're listening to Yak About Today. And as always, I've been thinking. So that's what we'll Yak About Today. What's up, everybody? David Yak here, here for Yak About Today, hoping you are better, healthier, and more informed than any generation that came before. So if the years 46 to 64 mean something to you, then this is the place you want to be. Now put your headphones on, go for a run, and listen to what we yak about today. So, my friends, you might have noticed that at the beginning of the show I didn't say I've been thinking about a particular topic or we had a great guest interview. Nope, I've just been thinking. You see, every year or so, usually around New Year's, I reevaluate the show, try to find ways to improve the show, get the feedback, look at the shows uh, that work and those shows that don't work. Also, I look at the emails and tweets that have recommendations. And by the way, I do enjoy the emails, tweets that are complimentary. The criticisms, well, not so much. But they are teaching moments, I guess. And as you all know, much of the communications that we in the media receive these days are over the top and extreme at times. The compliments can almost make you feel godly, and some of the criticisms are either borderline hate mail or somewhat threatening, and it used to be that the majority of the hate mail was uh, gay-related. That's been surpassed by some very, very strong opinions about politics. But most of you know, this show has always been dedicated to the wiser and more mature of us, covering topics that may be helpful as we age, from technology to health, nutrition, finances, employment opportunities, learning how to be an entrepreneur, or even how to improve your memory. And at times we cover the arts. And as you know, and hear every week at the beginning of the show, we say if you are familiar with the years uh, 46 to 64, then this is the place you want to be. But that only works if we are covering topics that are important to you or have conversations that you relate to. So I always ask at this time of year for you to email me or tweet me or send your suggestions through our Facebook pages um, of topics and conversations that you're sort of interested in. And you know that the more I receive, the better the show will become. So sending in your thoughts and ideas allow me to book guests that would be interest, uh, of interest to you. So, why not take a stab at writing me at yakabouttoday at gmail.com. That's yakabouttoday at gmail.com. Or tweet me at yakabouttoday. And tell me how I can make this show better for you. All right. So, again, um, as I told you, I sort of rethink the show around New Year's. So just some ideas. I want to share some ideas with you about what we have planned for this season. Number one, later this season, we will be using a new platform called Spreaker, which will allow us to broadcast live over several of the social social media platforms. And in addition, we're setting up a system where we can take live phone calls live on the air. And also, when appropriate, We will broadcast the show with video when we think the show will benefit more uh, when you can see it. And of course, that'll allow you to see my pretty face. And over the next few months, and I think this has become really important to me, the team will be developing a new podcast, tentatively, tentatively, sorry about that title, Yak's Tales. And it's more or less a biographical podcast where everyone will get uh, to tell some stories that made them who they are today. So that's pretty much uh, some of the thinking that's going on. And again, please write us at yakabouttoday at gmail.com and send us your ideas. Send us your comments. Send us uh, your criticisms, or constructive criticisms, I should say. And we'll do our best to arrange interviews um, or 
talk about topics that are of interest to you. Don't talk back. I'd like to talk about our sponsor. So if you've been listening to Yak About Today, then you know it is sponsored by New Vision Eye Center. And if you know me, then you know I wouldn't have a sponsor unless I thought they were the best and I could put my name behind them. Well, New Vision Eye Center, based in Vero Beach, Florida, is that place. And all you have to do is meet Drs. Manati, Reinauer, Tate, and O'Brien to know that you are in the best hands to take care of your eyes. So, go to New Vision Eye Center and tell them Yak from Yak About Today sent you. Because I wouldn't trust my eyes to anyone else. Don't talk back. Okay, since we don't have any guests lined up for today, why don't we just rifle through some of our notes and see if we can find anything of interest uh, for you. So, oh, I have an idea. So even though I didn't schedule a question and answer session today, uh, something sort of came across my desk yesterday that I thought was interesting enough to sort of chat about. So a listener from Scotland, who happens to be one of my favorite podcasters, asked a question. Well, not so much a question as a statement. So he said... You should have more mental health professionals, some shrinks, therapists, psychiatrists, etc., on your show. Maybe you'll get more insight into what's going on with, as you say, the wiser and more mature of us. Well, that sort of, um, I guess, led me to a story that uh, I, normally I wouldn't share with you, but I think it's sort of important, and I think he's right that we should have more... Uh, uh, behavioral uh, specialist on the show. And uh, given my age, you know, when we were young, therapy or psychiatrist was always considered taboo, you know, automatically when you went into therapy or you saw a psychiatrist, it meant you were ill. Um, and probably it was thought of as one step away from being an institution. Anyway, so I never had that experience. So I sort of went through life, and as I've told you earlier, that, you know, you have a very successful life, you raise your family, and then all of a sudden, uh, one day, it came time to actually retire from that life that had had me on a plane going to every country in the world, you know, managing my business, coming home and enjoying uh, the social life and all that. And all of a sudden, one day you wake up, and in my case, I never thought of it as being retirement. I always said, hey, you know, I'll be semi-retired, and I'll go into consulting. But the idea of waking up and not actually producing um, all that work or living a life that I complained about nonstop for tiring me out or being too stressful, all of a sudden the opposite occurred. You wake up one morning and you go, what do I do? You know, and then you think back to your parents who did nothing and, you know, sat in front of a TV set. You think about a lot of people in this generation who take their yoga classes and pottery classes. It's an entirely different thing. It's a way of thinking. And you don't realize how all those stressful years that you thought was stressful, um, being a productive citizen, turns out to be the one thing you wish would come back because you're not sure exactly what life is about. Anyway, in my case, it was the first time that I tried to understand it, and I did reach out to a therapist. And I'm not sure I knew what therapy was all about, quite frankly. Uh, for some reason, I had it in my mind that you sit there and a psychiatrist, you know, sits with a bulletin board, and some of them do, I guess, and you're sitting and laying down on a leather couch, and you're sitting there going, oh, doctor, doctor, you know, I'm so depressed, I'm this, and the doctor says, you know, whatever the doctor says, it's supposed to straighten you out, the way medication straightens out uh, some, some kind of disease you have. Well, as it turns out, through talk therapy um, and the right guidance, you actually can talk your way through an understanding of where you are and where life has taken you, uh, understanding your past, and maybe developing a way to move forward in the future. And I found this fascinating. And it is true that we haven't had much, uh, many behavioral health people uh, come on the show. Um, but I have asked, and I'd really like to line up because it would be interesting to have people on the show who could explain 
to everybody what they seem what they have found through their sessions with people who are the wiser and more mature, what they're going through, how they think, what's the commonality amongst people uh, who are aging. So anyway, to answer the question, or not so much a question, uh, my friend from Scotland, you're out there, I know you're listening, uh, I will. <clears throat> I will bring on uh, some therapist. Uh, I think it's hard to get some therapist to agree to this, maybe, you know, that patient confidentiality or uh, actually I'm not sure what it is. I will try. I promise. So uh, having said that, uh, let me stop here. We'll go to uh, our advertisers and uh, I'll be back on the other side. Don't talk back. And we are back. So uh, many of you know that I've been obsessed about our memory capability as we are aging. In fact, um, I think it was last week and the week before, or maybe the uh, two or three weeks ago, that we did a two-part series with Brad uh, Zupp. He's the memory empowerment for all person and considered one of the great uh, memory athletes in the world today. And he's in his mid-50s, and he has a program that actually um, helps people develop their memory capability as they age. And the reason I'm obsessed about it is because it seems to be the number one conversation that happens around our dinner tables or at the club or uh, at lunches or even listening to the radio uh, when you're listening to uh, somebody who fits into that wiser and more mature uh, group. So uh, whenever I come across something, I like to share it with you. So there's an article in the New York Times, I think it was January 16th, uh, 2019, funny to say 2019, isn't it, about a hormone called uh, arisen, and it's a, a hormone that's released during exercise that lately uh, they have found can improve brain health and lessen the damage that occurs during um, senality diseases such as Alzheimer's. And this study, by the way, I, you know, all studies have to be published before I really talk about them. Um, the study was published in Nature Medicine, and as usual, it involved mice, but its findings could help explain how, at a molecular level, exercise protects our brains and possibly preserves memory and thinking skills, even in people whose pasts are fading. And there's considerable uh, scientific evidence already that demonstrates that exercise remodels the brain and affects thinking. And of course, researchers have shown in rats and mice that running ramps up the creation of new brain cells in the, I think I'll say this right, hippocampus. That's the portion of the brain devoted to memory formation and storage. So they are saying exercise will improve the health and function uh, of your brain and uh, will allow you to communicate better. So I think we've covered this before. Uh, I know that everything about me changes when I'm on a, a regular exercise uh, routine. Now, what was that story I just did? Okay. Um, that, oh, by the way, that was written by Gretchen Reynolds uh, over at the New York Times. Don't talk back. So here's another article that I found uh, fascinating, and this one you're all going to love because it's a question – that um, everybody asks, and uh, everybody has a different answer to, and it's sort of relevant uh, to this generation in particular who has a tendency to think of them th themselves as much younger than they may be in, uh, in the number uh, that represents their years. And the question is, am I old? So, again, there's an article in the New York Times that I found interesting and thought I would share with you. It's the December 13th, 2018 issue, which more or less is the uh, continuation uh, somewhat of the exercise discussion uh, we just had. There was a uh, speech given by the philanthropist uh, David Rubenstein that urged more senior people to accelerate as they entered the next chapter of their lives, he sort of recommends that we pick up the pace because he sees or saw that so many of our contemporaries are sort of stopping living, uh, if not, he says, stooping to smell the roses. 
And when he was asked if he considers himself old, Mr. Rubenstein, now 69, said, 69 seems like a teenager to me. Now, at the same time, when he asked the same of a 60-year-old poet who was in between surgeries to help her mend after a fall said, point blank, I am an old lady. So um, what makes, uh, I think the question is, what makes uh, one a mature person identify as old when another one doesn't. And getting back to the original question, what is old anyway? Which I think is more up in the head. So old is sort of changing uh, as lifespans have grown longer. Someone who is 60 years old today is considered middle-aged compared to maybe the parents' generation. And the question again, or the second question, or the next question, is so when does old begin? So there's a Dr. Sherbov, and uh, he says that for Americans, it's roughly 70 to 71 for men and 73 to 74 for women. Though, as he has written, your true age is not just the number of years you've lived. And the main idea of the project and the speech was that old, the old age threshold should not be fixed, but depend on the characteristics of people, factors sh- such as life expectancy, personal health, cognitive function, and disability rates all play a role. He said, and today's 65-year-old is more like a 55-year-old uh, from 45 years ago. And another comparison is that As with beauty, the meaning of old also depends on the person you ask. Millennials, now in their 20s and 30s, say that old starts at 59. Now, Gen Xers, now in their 40s, and no doubt with a new appreciation for just how close they are entering their 50s, say 65 is the onset of old. Now, boomers and the greatest generation pegged. 73 as the beginning of old. Now, clearly, much depends on the perspective of who's being asked to define old. When asking several 50-plus friends, there were dozens of responses, but the most fun ones were their current age plus four. And, of course, the most well-known replies that are difficult to hear is when you are called ma'am instead of miss and when a man is referred to as sir. So, as for me, David Yak here, my brain and the mirror are always in conflict. Am I young or am I old? All right, uh, so I got a bit more time and I'll try to squeeze this in. I want to give you guys an update on my switch uh, from cable TV to YouTube TV. And top line, I couldn't be more happy. So the benefits of moving to an internet-based TV system are even more than I had really previous uh, thought. Now, let me just explain real quickly as a side note. I'm not speaking about Netflix. I'm not speaking about Hulu or Amazon Prime. I'm talking about a cable replacement. Now, having said that, let me tell you the benefits. So YouTube TV is an app that is downloaded onto a Roku device or an Apple TV. And just sort of the way you have to think about it is more in line with the way Netflix works or the way Hulu works. That's the way um, your cable replacement like YouTube TV will work. So the first thing I noticed is there's a better picture quality. It's a 1080p or 4K. And the reason it's better is because cable has a tendency to squeeze all those channels into the box and you lose some resolution. And of course, uh, regular cable TV doesn't come in 4K. Now, most of the cable replacements allow you to run on multiple TVs and devices without adding extra cost for every TV. And also for me, if you've ever used uh, YouTube, then you already know the YouTube TV interface, which I happen to like very much. The recordings of shows are slightly different, and in my mind, much better. On cable TV, you pick your show to record, and it records. In YouTube TV, you add a plus sign uh, to the shows you want to put in your library, and the next thing you know, the programs are always in your library and will be there for a year. And also, you have unlimited space. 
In addition, YouTube TV seems to have all the sports stations, including tennis, yay, without the extra cost. And the cost of all this is Xfinity Cable, which is the cable system I have that provides my internet, is $59, and the YouTube TV is $41. So it comes out to an even $100 for three TVs and all on all our computers, the iPads, phones. So it's a win-win. So... That's my update on the YouTube TV. And once again, I want to say thanks to our listeners for staying tuned in. Because of you, we are now carried on some of the largest podcasting systems worldwide, from iHeartRadio, iTunes, and TuneIn, to Spreaker and Blueberry in the U.S., to iVook in Spain and South America, and Omni Studio in Australia. And chances are wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to stay in touch, look for Yak About Today on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, or write to us at yakabouttoday at gmail.com. And, of course, if you like us that much, download the Yak About Today mobile app on the App Store. This is David Yak here, and until next week, yak amongst yourselves. Peace. Talk back.